everybody and welcome to this video which covers operant conditioning with a particular focus on Skinner and the Skinner box and the operant conditioning process including reinforcement and punishment. This is part of the psychology of learning topic for stage 2 psychology. Let's get started. So operant conditioning is a learning process in which the strength of a behaviour is modified by the consequences following the behaviour. To put it simply, it's learning via reward or punishment. It's important to remember at this point that classical conditioning, which is the first form of learning we covered, involves involuntary behaviours, which includes reflexes such as blinking, feeling queasy and salivating. Operant conditioning, on the other hand, involves voluntary behaviours, so the behaviours are chosen. So, behaviour can be continued by rewarding it, or it can be decreased by punishing it. So the main pioneer in operant conditioning was B.F. Skinner, pictured here. In the 1930s, B.F. Skinner began experimenting with rats and pigeons. Using food as a reward, or reinforcer in other words, he trained the animals to perform certain voluntary behaviours, such as turning in a circle when a light flashed, or pressing a lever when a bell rang. Theories state that behaviour that is followed by pleasant consequences is likely to be repeated and behaviour followed by unpleasant consequences is less likely to be repeated. It was Skinner that proved this in an experimental setting. So Skinner designed a chamber that became known as the Skinner box. By placing hungry rats and pigeons into this box, Skinner was able to study operant conditioning through conducting experiments with these animals. By using different types of reinforcement or punishment, Skinner could change the behaviour of the rats or pigeons inside the box. This process is called shaping. Now let's cover what a reinforcer or a punisher is. A reinforcer is anything that strengthens or increases the likelihood of a behaviour occurring again. So the stimulus can be an action or an event or an object. A punisher is anything that reduces or weakens or decreases the likelihood of a response occurring again. Again, the punishment can be an object, action or event. Let's first look at reinforcement in more detail. Reinforcement is any process that increases the frequency of a targeted behaviour. Operant conditioning is effective when behaviour is reinforced. So initially, when we're trying to shape a new behaviour, reinforcement can be continuous. So this means we reinforce it, or reward it in other words, every single time it's done. But for long-term behaviour modification, reinforcement cannot be predicted so it should turn to an intermittent schedule of reinforcement. We'll cover reinforcements and schedules in a future video. So a reinforcer, as I said before, is anything that increases the frequency and strength in a desired behaviour. But in order for it to be considered reinforcement, an increase in the target behaviour must result. Let's first look at positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement is when a pleasant stimulus is added after a desired behaviour has been performed. So for example, Skinner added the reinforcer of a food pellet after the rat demonstrated the correct behaviour of pressing the lever. As we saw in class, he also added the reinforcer of food after the pigeons had demonstrated the correct behaviour of turning or pecking whenever they saw the relevant word. Another example of positive reinforcement is when a student studies hard. That's the behaviour that needs to be reinforced. They are then rewarded or reinforced by getting a good grade, which is the pleasant stimulus being added after the desired behaviour of studying hard, which will then motivate them to study harder and continue good study practices in future, so the behaviour increases. In class, some of you may have heard me talk about my own example. If I wanted to reinforce you all to be on time for my lessons, I could use positive reinforcement. So I could give you a chocolate every time you're on time for class. That would be positive reinforcement because the pleasant stimulus of the chocolate is added after you do the right behaviour or desired behaviour of being on time. Now let's look at negative reinforcement. Negative reinforcement involves an unpleasant stimulus being removed by continuing a desired behaviour. So for example, Skinner turned off the electric shock when the rat demonstrated the correct behaviour of pressing the lever. So the easy way to think of negative reinforcement is we must continue to do a desired behaviour in order for something unpleasant to be removed. 
A very good example of this is taking a Panadol or painkiller to remove a headache. By doing so, you're going to reinforce the behavior. So the next time you have a headache, you are going to take a Panadol to remove the unpleasant stimulus of a headache. You must continue this behavior to avoid the unpleasant stimuli. It's the same up here as we can see in this picture. The rat needed to press the lever in order to avoid the negative or aversive stimulus of the electric shock. So if I wanted to negatively reinforce students, I could definitely do that by promising to remove the last assignment for the year. So I could say to my students, if you're on time for the rest of the year, you don't have to do the last assignment. Naturally, they will be on time for every single lesson. And so the behavior continues but it's to avoid the unpleasant stimulus or aversive stimulus of the last assignment. Now let's look at punishment. Punishment is a stimulus or event that decreases the frequency or occurrence of a behavior that it follows. So whilst reinforcement increases behavior, punishment decreases behavior. Now this is useful for short-term behavior change, but not long-term behavior change. Only reinforcements are effective for long-term behavior modification. And again, a punisher can be anything that reduces the frequency and strength of an undesired behavior. There are also two types of punishment, the first being aversive punishment. This is when an unpleasant stimulus is added after an undesired behavior. Sometimes in some texts, this is called positive punishment, but it's actually better to use the proper term aversive punishment. A very good example of this is receiving a speeding fine. Fines are unpleasant and we receive them after doing an undesired behavior. So we receive the speeding fine after the unpleasant or undesired behavior of speeding. That will then reduce the chance that we will speed in the future, resulting in a behavior change. Another good example of aversive punishment is getting a detention. So someone gets a detention after talking back to their teacher, which is the undesirable behavior with the goal of reducing that undesirable behavior in the future. Using my example of wanting my students to be on time for class, if they were late, I could add an aversive punishment. So I could give them a detention or a late notification in the school system. That is something unpleasant being added after a desired behavior that wasn't there before. The other type of punishment is response cost. This is when a pleasant stimulus is removed after an undesirable behavior. This is often the most common type of punishment that students are familiar with. Sometimes this is called negative punishment, but again, it's better to use the proper term response cost. So an example of response cost, sticking with the example of driving, is having your license taken away after speeding. So the undesirable behavior is the same, but the punishment type is different. So getting your license taken away, which is a pleasant stimulus, is definitely going to reduce speeding in the future. Getting your mobile phone taken away is also a form of response cost. So if you were on it in class, which is the undesirable behavior, this will result in reduced phone usage in the future. Using my example of students being late to class, if they were late, I could use response cost. So I could say to my students, if you're late for my class again, I'm gonna take all of your phones away and you cannot have them for the rest of the day. So it's gonna reduce the undesirable behavior continuing of being late. So remember this key, this will be really, really helpful. No matter what type of reinforcement it is, reinforcement increases behavior. Punishment always decreases behavior. Positive, something is always added. Negative, something is taken away. Aversive punishment, something is added. Response cost, something is taken away. This is also a really, really helpful infographic for you to look at to help with your revision. So let's finish with going through the definitions of each type and each component of operant conditioning. So positive reinforcement is the application or addition of a positive stimulus to increase a desired behavior. Negative reinforcement is the removal of a negative stimulus to increase a desired behavior. Aversive punishment is the application or addition of a negative stimulus to decrease an undesired behavior. And response cost is the removal of a positive or pleasant stimulus to decrease an undesired behavior. So that's the end of this video. I hope you found that useful. As always, if you've got any questions, let me know. Otherwise, happy revising.